Section 14 of The Aesop for Children. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Aesop for Children by Aesop. The Mice and the Weasels. The weasels and the mice were always up in arms against each other. In every battle the weasels carried off the victory, as well as a large number of the mice, which they ate for dinner next day. In despair the mice called a council, and there it was decided that the mouse army was always beaten because it had no leaders. So a large number of generals and commanders were appointed from among the most eminent mice. To distinguish themselves from the soldiers in the ranks, the new leaders proudly bound on their heads lofty crests and ornaments of feathers or straw. Then, after long preparation of the mouse army and all the arts of war, they sent a challenge to the weasels. The weasels accepted the challenge with eagerness, for they were always ready for a fight when a meal was in sight. They immediately attacked the mouse army in large numbers. Soon the mouse line gave way before the attack, and the whole army fled for cover. The privates easily slipped into their holes, but the mouse leaders could not squeeze through the narrow openings because of their headdresses. Not one escaped the teeth of the hungry weasels. Greatness has its penalties. The Wolf and the Lean Dog A wolf prowling near a village one evening met a dog. It happened to be a very lean and bony dog, and Master Wolf would have turned up his nose at such meager fare had he not been more hungry than usual. So he began to edge toward the dog, while the dog backed away. "'Let me remind your lordship,' said the dog, his words interrupted now and then, as he dodged a snap of the wolf's teeth. "'How unpleasant it would be to eat me now! Look at my ribs! I am nothing but skin and bone. But let me tell you something in private. In a few days my master will give a wedding feast for his only daughter. You can guess how fine and fat I will grow on the scraps from the table. Then is the time to eat me.' The wolf could not help thinking how nice it would be to have a fine, fat dog to eat, instead of the scrawny object before him. So he went away, pulling in his belt, and promising to return. Some days later the wolf came back for the promised feast. He found the dog in his master's yard, and asked him to come out and be eaten. "'Sir,' said the dog with a grin, "'I shall be delighted to have you eat me. I'll be out as soon as the porter opens the door.' But the porter was a huge dog whom the wolf knew by painful experience to be very unkind toward wolves. So he decided not to wait, and made off as fast as his legs could carry him. Do not depend on the promises of those whose interest it is to deceive you. Take what you can get when you can get it. THE FOX AND THE LION A very young fox, who had never before seen a lion, happened to meet one in the forest. A single look was enough to send the fox off at top speed for the nearest hiding place. The second time the fox saw the lion, he stopped behind a tree to look at him a moment before slinking away. But the third time the fox went boldly up to the lion and, without turning a hair, said, Hello there, old top. Familiarity breeds contempt. Acquaintance with evil blinds us to its dangers. THE LION AND THE ASS a lion and an ass agreed to go hunting together. In their search for game, the hunters saw a number of wild goats run into a cave and laid plans to catch them. The ass was to go into the cave and drive the goats out, while the lion would stand at the entrance to strike them down. The plan worked beautifully. The ass made such a frightful din in the cave, kicking and braying with all his might, that the goats came running out in a panic of fear, only to fall victim to the lion. The ass came proudly out of the cave. "'Did you see how I made them run?' he said. "'Yes, indeed,' answered the lion. "'And if I had not known you and your kind, I should certainly have run too.'" The loud-mouthed boaster does not impress nor frighten those who know him. End of section 14